Okay, here's your tutorial using Photoshop. We're going to open up CS6. This has to do with the Russian constructivism units. We are going to be looking with some other options. The menu and submenu are very similar to Adobe Illustrator. Clicking on File, we can go to New. It's going to pop open a window. Often, it's pretty easy to just set this up to US paper. We can decide to change that later. Resolution is 300 pixels per square inch, which works for print. Photoshop is a pixels-based program, so it's very important to start with a high resolution and work your way down versus starting low and work your way up. So be very careful with this because it becomes pixelated and fuzzy if it's too low. Change this to your name, and that means your name, uh, as a file as you start working it. Okay, It's going to pull up your history window. If you do not see your history window, whoop, whoop, right here, you're going to go under window, look for history. And you're also going to look for layers. You want to have layers checked because this unit is built strongly upon your layers. They could become side by side. You can tab them in together. That's fine too. Whichever works for you in your workspace that you actually have. Anytime you actually click on your left-sided icons, you can see that your submenu up here is also changing. So there are some different options as well there. Photoshop does not have the stroke and fill. What it does give you are two different color options of foreground and background, so you can actually reverse these simply by clicking the arrow. Coming over here into layers, you have options to create more layers. You can go into layer, new, layer, get away from me, there. And it'll ask you some questions, answer, read, click OK. There are shortcuts to making new layers. Down here, if you let it pop up, you'll see a pop-up that says click new layers. So you can actually make several different layers. This is going to act like clear panes of glass, and you can put a different object on each one, which I'm going to demonstrate for you. So with this layer, I come over, there's a paint bucket. If you do not see the paint buckets, because you see gradient, these little triangles here are indications that you can actually click on it and create different options. So maybe my background, for example, I want to be completely red. I'm going to fill it in. Maybe on the second layer, I decide to make a different shape. Click down to try to find the polygonal lasso tool. And once you create your shape, Make sure it's united, change to a white, fill in the triangle. You have to click on the dotted marquee again before you can actually stop the blinking and just click in an open space. So right now you have a white triangle and a red background and you can see that if I move it, the icon up here starts to change. Let's duplicate a layer, so I'll do control, click, duplicate layer, OK. So now on this layer I have a second one and I end up with two. You can hold your shift button down and you can select both layers and you can move them together. Command T will give you a transpose and you can actually turn them and do things like that. And as you work the Russian constructivist unit, you might want to do some interesting things to your piece like this. Okay. Always start a new object on a new layer. Text is required for your project. So as you come in and you select some text. I've got to use good design strategies like contrast, alignment, repetition, and proximity. This letter font isn't working for me, so I'll select a different one. That kind of looks a little more Russian constructivism. I'm going to up that up to 72. If you need to go bigger, just double click and you can go bigger and type it in. So now I've got more bold. I'm going to Command T until I can turn it and I can get this more aligned properly. So now I can line it up a little bit more fitting with that triangle uh, shape and squeeze that nice and snug. Pull that up a little bit higher, transpose it, make it fit. So looking at the lettering, you can see when we're here, I can use the eyeball to hide the layers to see what works and what doesn't. Now it says T for text. While it's in text mode, you can still retype it in case I spelled it wrong and forgot an M. But once you do this next step, you can't re-edit it. So what you have to do is layer, rasterize, type. Once you rasterize the type, it now becomes a shape much like the triangles in the preceding layers. So now you can see that the T is gone and it's more like that. I can take the polygonal tool now and this is the fun part. I can actually come in and select a section of the Wimmer and do layer new via cut. Now it's on a separate layer, which for Russian constructivism totally works because now I can use my arrows and I can separate that. That's part of the whole fun of this. 
Now if I go into, apologize, edit, transform, I have some options here. Now these options will not be open if you are in the text mode, but they will be open if you've rasterized the type. So go into distort, perspective, or skew, and you can actually change the appearance of this letter form. If it doesn't work for you, command Z for undo. Let's try it again. Come into transform, let's try perspective this time and see what happens. And that's not really working for me either. Command Z for undo, and then I'll try another one. Let's go into skew. Did I do skew? I think I did do skew. <laughs> Edit, transform, distort. Now you can see where some of this can be pretty handy with creating designs. So now if I do that, you can see there's somewhat this feeling of connecting. So I'm going to take another one of those triangles over here, and I'm going to slide it up. I'm going to turn it with Command T. I'm going to put it in. I'm going to play with it and keep working with each of those layers as if they were all cut paper and none of them were ever glued down because that's the whole point of working with the Photoshop and its layers. Every object is free and clear. It does not have to be stuck, but there are some things that can happen to you and you don't have that transition. So let me get this where I want it. Okay, maybe I'm going to fill in that orange. Let's put in a giant circle marquee, make a new layer, select an orange color for your background. Let's fill that in. And on this layer, instead of having it fill that all in, each layer up here also has choices like multiply, uh, color burn. Doesn't do anything. Try multiply, go into fill, lower it down, move it up move it down and see what happens. As you move each of these layers, different things can happen. Sometimes you can lose everything by just doing that because it's in a hierarchy and it works for what it's going to work with. Um, let's see what else can I show you guys while I'm in this mode. Okay, let's say that, let's go back to normal and my opacity going to kick it down a little bit more and kick it back up. And let's do this over here. But let's hide it underneath the lettering. That's better. Okay, I like that. Uh, working with this and deciding to do something different, you can do this and stop for the day and walk away very easily by doing a file, save as, your name should be there, and it needs to say PSD for Photoshop and layers has to be checked. Save it to your jump drive. Your jump drive should be located over here on the left hand side when you find it and you click save. When you open it next time it'll open and it'll keep your layers. So I can close it. I have it here. Double click it. You'll see that all my layers are still there. Here's what a lot of folks accidentally do. They accidentally file, save as, they don't check the layers, they click JPEG and it's acting like it's going to glue everything down. As you can see here, when I open up the JPEG now into Photoshop, it will no longer have any layers. They're all gone, which means that JPEG, you can no longer edit each of those shapes. It's just stuck. It is what it is, and you are locked. So always keep the Photoshop file before you send me the JPEG file. You can do a different one and say, File, Save As, and you can select JPEG and it'll save it as a different one. But if you uncheck layers, you can accidentally glue all this down. So just be careful with that Photoshop little lesson of stuff. Lots of interesting things for Photoshop. Obviously editing photos, but we're going to use it as a design tool. Stay away from pen down here and watch out for shapes. Uh, if you select shapes, you can use those, but again, once you make a shape, you are going to have to rasterize this layer, and that means going back into here and going to rasterize shape, and then it becomes that shape again. Otherwise, you will not be able to edit that shape the way you think you might be able to. So, just some words of wisdom and caution. Uh, watch again, watch slowly, pause, go through the process, try to figure out the things you'd like to try to do, and things will work with you. Okay? All right, that's it.